What's up, YouTubers? So I got an experiment that we can do. And no, I'm not baking you guys a cake, so don't ask about it. And trust me, you wouldn't want it if I did. It would be, wouldn't be any good. So what I have in front of us here is a mad scientist experiment. Although by the end of this video, you won't think I'm that crazy, I guess. So without anything further said, let's get into it and I'll explain what's going on. So I've done a lot of videos on 7018 and all sorts of different welding rods and welding processes and you'll hear me say in a lot of videos I talk about things like hydrogen and brittlement and the importance of knowing what you're welding on. This video is going to actively demonstrate why I talk about that stuff. So what I have in front of us is actually the end of the test that I perform. Now you can't see anything and don't worry, we'll get right into the testing in a minute where you can see what we're gonna be talking about, but I'm not baking ingredients in here, they're welding coupons. And what I did in this video is I welded three welds. I ran one with a 7018 that's been sitting around on the shop floor for probably three days. I welded with a brand new straight out of a hermetically sealed pack 7018. And then I welded a bead on plate with Red Rod 6010. Upon welding all of them, I cleaned all the welds up with a wire wheel, tossed them in mineral oil, and then observed the results. And I think you're gonna be pretty interested in the results of this. So let's go and cut straight to the footage and pictures and I'll comment as we go. To start things off, I'm gonna be putting a freshly welded 7018 strip right into this mineral oil. Now, if you look at it, you can see the thermals. Basically, the heat is heating that oil and you can see it kind of lifting up off the plate. But one thing you don't see is bubbles. Here, I dropped in the 7018 that was done with a rod picked up off the floor, so definitely could have attracted some moisture. We can't really see much from this angle, but there doesn't appear to be too many bubbles, if any, coming off of that, and we'll get a better angle. Here I dropped in the 6010, and I want you to pay attention to what's going on here. You're going to start seeing bubbles coming off that 6010 plate, and it might be a little bit hard to see at this, but I will change the camera angle and it'll all become clear take a look at the left side even though it's not in focus you can see bubbles rising right out of that 6010 weld from my understanding what those bubbles are are basically hydrogen that's escaping from that weld you guys got to remember that hydrogen is a very small molecule or atom and it can pass through steel like it's swiss cheese basically it's might as well be porous to the hydrogen so it can escape. The reason you don't want hydrogen in a weld is because it can make high strength steel brittle, essentially because of the holes that it leaves behind in the heat affected zone. Now you can see, look at the amount of bubbles coming off of that. And that's why, like I said, hydrogen embrittlement happens when you use a rod that is not low hydrogen on high strength steel. So pretty interesting results, isn't it? Now, it really goes to show that if you're gonna weld on some high strength steel, something that is susceptible to hydrogen embrittlement, and you go and run with 6010, or any other rod that with stick welding that's not low hydrogen, guess what? You're gonna have a serious problem. Now, hydrogen embrittlement primarily affects higher strength alloys, okay? If you're just welding mild steel, the difference really is going to be negligible. But with those high hardness and higher strength steels, you could very well have failure long before you should simply by welding it with a rod or a process that is not considered low hydrogen. Now, I didn't cover it earlier, but I'll mention it now. When you get into welding big structural components and say it's more commonly, I guess, on high strength pipe, 
it's very common to use blow torches or burners to preheat the steel so that as you weld it, that steel is hot because if you keep the steel or whatever material you're welding at an elevated temperature, it will boil off the hydrogen before it ever has an issue or a, a risk of getting absorbed into that molten metal weld pool and in the heat affected zone and cause uh, brittle failures or, or hydrogen embrittlement. So uh, on you know, code specific higher end high liability jobs, there's all sorts of things far beyond just using low hydrogen fillers or weld materials to prevent hydrogen embrittlement. Us at home, if you plan on welding anything that's high strength, you should be looking at low hydrogen. So if you're stick welding 7018, technically ER70S6 because it's just raw wire, that uh, will also generally be fairly low in hydrogen. If they make specific alloy wires for MIG or, well, not really MIG, but wire welding higher strength alloys, so whether or not you'd be using ER70, but I guess the process itself, because it doesn't have a flux coating that absorbs moisture from the air, that it's far safer uh, for welding on stuff like that. Same thing with TIG. TIG uses similar wire to MIG, and for the most part, it does not impart hydrogen into a weld mint. So it's all, I guess all those things are definitely things you could consider and should consider depending on what you're welding on. And I'll, I'll tell you for myself, it's kind of amazing in real time to see all those little bubbles coming off the 6010 side which my understanding and reading is, is basically little atoms or multiple atoms of hydrogen, hydrogen gas. And, and like I had said earlier, the issue is, is that when it is trapped in solidifying metal and then escapes, it basically creates Swiss cheese in the heat affected zone area and possibly in the weld. And then when you stress that material, it's fractures because it's brittle. Okay, pretty interesting stuff. Now, I will do a test in a couple days and upload it for doing MIG just to demonstrate the same thing weld on plate and we should see no uh, hydrogen bubbles escaping on either one of those processes. Flux core wire I will as well. That I'm unsure of. I mean the flux core wire itself is generally sealed shut in a way, sometimes laser welded. But I honestly, I don't know if flux core wire would come back with bubbles on it or not. So I guess we'll find out on that one. With that said, thanks for sticking around. Hopefully you learned something. If you got any thoughts on this, question, comments, you know where to leave them. Thanks.